this is Sienna. And- hey guys, this is William Weeks, and you're listening to Talking Armageddon. Talking with- Armageddon with BQ. All right, all right. Welcome to the latest segment of Talking Armageddon here on the Impact Lounge. I am BQ, and I'm sitting here talking to Adam Thornstow, one half of Reno Scum. So, Adam, thank you for coming on the show and being flexible. I know we had some technical difficulties before. Totally my fault. But um, in general, how the hell have you been since we last saw you on television? Uh, I've been really good, man. I've been busy. Uh, I came back to wrestling about 90 days after my bicep surgery, so... I think that was June, and uh, pretty much nonstop ever since, uh, minus not being on TV. I got to get into this injury thing. Uh, first of all, I know it's been some time since it's happened, and you mentioned uh, you were wrestling it again 90 days afterwards, and you're uh, back in the ring and everything, but are you fully healed right now, or are you dealing with nagging pains? Uh, I'm 100% physically. Uh, mentally, sometimes I think about it. Like, not so much when I'm wrestling. Um. I don't know, just on trips there or whatever, because uh, with the tendon, it's not like a bone or anything. You just, you don't really know. Um, but I'm able to move around a bunch of weight in the gym again, and uh, I haven't had any problems except for probably the first match back. I just had a little bit of pain and stuff. I think it was just from being sore from not using it, so I'd say I'm 100%. Is that pretty common with injuries? Um, just, does it affect, you know, like you said, it kind of affects you mentally. Does it... Does it, are, you, are you a little less confident in the ring sometimes moving around, uh, afraid to re, re-aggravate something? No, I, I don't think so because in the ring you're uh, – I don't know if autopilot's the right, right word, you know, but with adrenaline going and whatnot and uh, just doing the match, you're, I don't know. I don't, I don't think about my arm until, you know, afterwards. Even – I mean, I, I tore my bicep in the ring and then um, – I wrestled the rest of the match for about, I think it was like 15, 16 minutes. And then all the pain really set in about half an hour backstage after everything happened. All right. So what I understood previously, and we kind of talked about this offline a little bit, but everyone is under the impression that you injured yourself in a televised match. Um, when did, when and how did this injury actually happen? So the injury actually happened after we had debuted on television. Uh, Impact, I think, just ran with it for storyline purposes. Uh, I injured it, uh, dude, I think at the end of March or April, I can't remember the date right now, but, um, I was at a all pro wrestling event in San Francisco, California wrestling, Jeff Cobb, Carl Fredericks and Jacob Fatu. So Jacob's, uh, he's, um, Tonga kid's son, uh, from WWE. He's a big Samoan kid and he did this big dive and, uh, when we caught him, my bicep just popped. Did you, when it happened, did you, I mean, did you know what happened or do you have no idea? It's one of those things like after the match kind of got checked out. Um, no, I knew something was wrong. I thought I had broken my arm. Um, but I, I, you know, I looked at Cobb in the match, uh, cause Jeff's been a good friend of mine for a long time. I was like, I don't know something's wrong, man, but we'll just keep wrestling. And then once I got backstage, uh, even then I was like, I, I think I broke my radius. Um, I've worked in medicine for a long time. So, you know, and then I got home and I picked up my daughter and I saw my bicep rolled up. So I knew then what had happened. Is that, a, is that how you met your wife? Not, not that I stalk you, but I've, I've heard in uh, previous interviews that she works uh, in, in the medical field. Yeah, uh, my wife and I both met. Uh, we both work in uh, surgery and she's a nurse practitioner. So, um, yeah, we, uh, she had started working in the operating room after me and then uh, we just met and hit it off. So what's your schooling background then? I was a biology major. Um, I wanted to be a doctor for a little bit, very brief period of time. And then um, they offered me uh, just kind of on the job training for a surgical tech program, which I was going to go to school for anyway. Um, Nevada just kind of dumped the program. So they, we have a level two trauma center, which is the biggest in northern Nevada and some in northern California. So. When programs get dropped like that, they have to offer in-house training. And I just had, had, you know, anatomy and physiology and a bunch of science classes. So I had the prereqs and jumped on that. And uh, it's been a pretty good gig ever since. So the uh, the doctor thing is uh, no longer on the table, not in the cards anymore? No, it's not for me. Like I said, uh, my wife's a nurse practitioner now, so she's busy enough. Um, I mean, you know, I... I'm not an indie superstar by any means, but I wrestle every weekend and travel and stuff like that. And 
Um, I mean, thankfully to impact, we get a pretty good rate now to where we make a couple bucks wrestling and so as busy as we are and stuff like that, I just, uh, right now, yeah, I have no desire. I'm going to be 35 in January. So by the time I, um, go to med school, that'd be four years and then residency and stuff like that. It's just not for me anymore. I hear you. I actually have my bachelor's degree in March and, I, and I'm 38 and I feel absolutely ancient um, doing it at this stage of my life. So I kind of kind of feel you on that one. I have to imagine the injury really took a toll on your personal life, um, you know, come to speak about it. And uh, I think people can have money saved up. They can have a dual income household. But I have to believe when something like that occurs, there's a, a degree of panic. Because as you said before, it's how you feed your family. Uh, was, was it a scary reality? To get injured I, I don't know if you have a history of injuries or not um so i don't know if it's a situation you've been faced with before but you know w was it a scary thing to go through knowing damn this is this is kind of you know part of what puts money, uh, food on the table in the family well you know you, with the bicep like i couldn't work at the hospital either because um i need my hands to help people operate um but thankfully i had uh vacation time saved up and then um, there's just a couple of really good people at my work. You can donate vacation time up to like 40 hours a week. Um, I'm just blessed that people did that. So I had a steady paycheck from the hospital, uh, the entire time. I think I was gone from there two months. Um, the extra income from wrestling sucked. Uh, the thing that mentally took a toll on me was just impact. Like, I was like, man, like. You know, I, I told her, I was like, I'll, I'll be healed by Slammiversary, and that came around, and they didn't bring us out, and then over and over, we just weren't brought out, and, like, more mentally, like, the injury just played a toll. I'm like, man, like, it, it just sucks, you know? Like, I'm ready, we're willing to work. Uh, I, you know, I, I said it in the interview that they put together, I really felt like I let Luster down, because he was sitting there with his thumb up his ass, you know, like, ready to work, and he couldn't, and... So that kind of stuff just sucked. But as far as like being worried about putting food on the table, we were we were okay. And you got another gig going too, don't you? Uh, have a wrestling school or a gym or something along those lines? Uh, Luster owned the Reno Wrestle Factory for a long time, and it had a school. Um, and then pretty much all the guys we had trained started working, and we weren't getting any new students, so he shut that down last year. Um, he runs a promotion. Uh, he piggybacks off All Pro Wrestling, so it's All Pro Wrestling Nevada. Um, and he runs a couple of shows a year out here, and then we do a lot of charity work and stuff, uh, charity shows as well. But I, I don't have anything to do with the business side of wrestling. I don't. I don't desire to promote or anything like that. It's just, it's a headache enough for him. You know, I help him where I can, but um, him and uh, one of our other buddies we came up with, Paul Isadora, run that. Speaking of Nevada, not not to sound cliche, but what is the uh, weather like out there right now? I've been to Reno once in my life. I was there for a weekend, and it was actually back in high school. And I remember freezing. Like, the wind was just – and I'm in Illinois, and it's pretty windy here. But, I mean, I remember the wind just kicking in that area. Yeah. So, I was actually born in Illinois, and I lived there until I was four. So, you know, how cold it gets. And then Reno's – Reno is weird. I've seen it snow all the way into June. Uh, it was like – 52 today and sunny with no wind so it's nice it was snowing last week uh you never really know what you're gonna get with the weather here um but today the kids and i were out in the backyard playing so you know you just you take it one day at a time here um i, I really don't know it, it's crazy <laughs> like i said not to sound cliche I, I always like to ask i grew up in california lived there till i was 26 and i lived in florida the next four or five years and now i've been in illinois for a few years so i'm uh I always like to know what uh what what the weather is um around the country and everything. It's always really interesting to me. But you know, as far as the injury is going, I'm I'm thrilled that it's behind you, not something uh career threatening. I want to rewind time here a little bit and talked about impact, and we're gonna get to that in a second because I know people really want to hear about your time there. But I want to rewind time a little bit back and talk global force wrestling in the early days. There's not there's not many of us that know much about how it came together and what the atmosphere was like initially. And you were one of the feature tag teams during the, the AMP tapings. So I want to know, how did your participation with Global Force Wrestling come about? And what can you tell us about the early days of the promotion? I I know for sure it came about, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Kevin Gill. Um, he was out in New York and 
Sanjay was out there, and Sanjay was uh, had his hand in Global Force, and they were just talking. He's like, "Ah, you should check out this tag team, Reno Scum." And then uh, I was getting ready for bed, and I got a phone uh, phone call, and this uh, he's like, "Hey, man, this is Sanjay Dutt," and I was like, "For real? Like, who ripped?" You know, because <laughs> I, I, you know, I had never met Sanjay in all the years. Both of us wrestled, uh, especially with him being out here in LA every now and then. And, Whatever, but um, he's like, yeah, yeah, you come work the amp tapings for us. Uh, Kevin Gill put you over, and I mean that was pretty much it. We went down to Vegas, did the first tapings, then they did the second tapings with other talent, which was other first round matches, and then we did the third tapings, and then we also did one of the baseball shows because we have a uh, AAA baseball team up here in Reno. So I mean, there's not really any big story. It was just uh, Kevin Gill's my homie, and uh, he, you know, like social media and like YouTube and stuff, so awesome now because like anybody can be like, hey, check these guys out, and you just pull it up on YouTube. Like when I first started wrestling, I was literally sending VHS tapes to WWE, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, I, that that was it. He was like, yeah, man, they look cool. That's something we could do. Like they look TV ready, and um, everyone at uh, the Orleans and Vegas was, uh, you know, it was a lot of the old Impact crew and stuff like that, and then Jeff and. Sanjay, a uh, guy named Kevin Sullivan, Scott Demore was there, and everyone was just so cool to us, uh, helped us out a lot. Um, I mean, we just went in there and they told us to be who we are, so it was easy for us. How long? Uh, how long did the tapings last? Like, was it um, was it like two? You know, kind of like an impact as it was it two tapings uh, per day or? No, it was one day of tapings. I think there were twelve or sixteen matches on the bill um and then they were gone a month they came back the next month did the same thing and then they came back the last month in october and did the same thing oh wow Um, okay i had no idea i actually thought it was all done (laughs) at the same time yeah i mean that that's essentially the way impact does it i think they just cram four weeks of tapings instead of like impact will do two weeks in a day you know it flew by though it was really well organized um global force uh and impact uh, for that matter i mean from my experience but uh yeah global force was just like hey this is when you're up uh i think sanjay was the agent when we wrestled los luchas the first night and um uh, los luchas is an awesome la based tag team and uh i mean they really just let us eat their lunch man they're they're really good dudes and they're phenomenal workers but i mean that just helped us out a bunch I and mean, it was a, it was a reno scum highlight reel basically you know and uh being in vegas we wrestle there all the time so we were over and that's where jeff saw the oys and all that stuff and i think that's where he saw a little bit of dollar signs it just you know it takes a minute to catch on other places sometimes and unfortunately with the injury i, I think when it started to catch on we were kind of done <laughs> yeah um where did so I was gonna get into that later with some social media questions. Uh, where does the oi come from? Oi well, is just a punk rock term. Um, I think it's an old British term. Uh, but they just, you know, it's like uh, how you doing, You're like oi, or you want to go get something to eat, oi. Uh, yeah, it's just a punk rock thing, and um, there's no real meaning. I think it's just kind of it's what we chant. Like I don't know, a lot of bands sing it and stuff like that. So I was actually at your debut. I was, I was in the house in the impact zone. Um, I, and I wasn't sure what you guys were saying. Cause I mean, that was like your first time there. It wasn't really till I got home, watched it in, on TV. I'm like, Oh, it's oi, oi, oi. Okay. I mean, obviously it was in the song, but I didn't, I didn't catch it when you guys came out. Yeah. It, uh, like our indie song says it over and over. It's called the piss poor anthem, but it's just local punk rock band out of California. And, uh, so we sent that to impact and then, our actual song said hate 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 when we listened to it the first day we're like no it's gonna say oi somewhere so the the oi's in the opening of that song or luster and i they put us in a little um trailer studio and just had us record it that day so that's kind of cool so i've said it to my audience several times and lord knows i love impact through and through but i felt like that gfw version um what you know i watch the amped anthologies i felt like that version could have been a legit number two company. And I think Jeff had a really innovative vision for it. Do you think that, do you think it had the potential to overtake, you know, TNA and ring of honor or, or was, or did Jeff just wanted, you know, carve his own lane? 
I, you know, I don't know. I, I mean, not to kiss ass. Like we were just happy to finally be a part of something because we'd done Ring of Honor a few times, and you know they were always super cool to us and kind of high on us. But we live out on the West Coast. We don't have a huge indie name, so it's not like they're just going to sign us. So, I mean, we were. I don't know how you want to say it, drinking the Global Force Kool Aid, you know, because <laughs> a like everybody there was so cool and ready to work hard, um, treated us well. Um, it was exposure for us. So, I mean, I'd like to believe it could have been something aside from, you know, a merger with impact or anything like that. Uh, I just, I don't know, you know, I, like I said, I'm, I'm a wrestler. I I don't, I'm not promote. I don't get into the business side of things. And so I don't know what it takes to make that happen. Obviously a network and stuff like that, but, um, yeah, I thought everything was good. I mean, I, I thought the matches were good that they put out online. I thought a lot of guys like Kevin Cross and Virgil Flynn were getting, you know, their due on TV too. Yeah. Um, you know, we had star power with guys like Bobby Roode and uh, Magnus and stuff like that. So, you know, I thought it was a good upstart, and I thought it could have been something until – I mean, it obviously was something when it merged, but I thought it could have been its own entity. I was going to say Virgil Flynn, I really enjoyed watching him. I wasn't familiar with him at all and uh, don't know much about him. I kind of looked him up and uh, he's really, he's a really talented guy. There was, there was a lot of talent on the anthology and, you know, like you said, you're a wrestler. Don't know why I was able, able to secure anything. I I didn't know what to expect when I finally watched it. And uh, especially that first episode, I was like, man, this shit is really good. I mean, I, I was a really big fan of it. And as you said, I thought the wrestling was really good. The commentary was something I enjoyed a lot of that. I thought it was good. I thought the tournament formats were interesting. Great venue. I was going to ask why do you think it never got off the ground, but you know, I, I think uh, I think you just said it's not really your your area of expertise. But do you think all the negativity that later followed was just really unfair to Jeff Jarrett? I mean, because they, they used that as a platform to make fun of him for a long time and give him a really hard time. I mean, do, do you think it was pretty unfair? You know, I, I think wrestling fans are very funny that, you know, they always want to change. They always want something different. And then you give them something different and they just want to make fun of it. Um, unless it's the flavor of the month. And like with global force, like there were a lot of flavors of the month that, you know, like there were, indie stars there were already established stars there were new people so i think it's just the way the internet is and i i don't think it's just wrestling i think you know i i'm not the guy who talks crap as much on the internet like I, i'll just say it to you man like yeah I, I was raised by a world war ii vet my grandfather and you know he's always told me if you don't have if you don't have the balls to say it to someone's face just don't say it and I kind of feel that way with social media and people, but yeah, I don't, you know, wrestling fans, uh, I love them, but sometimes I don't even think they know what they want. I agree. And, and kind of like what you're alluding to watching global force, it, it had something for everybody on there. And one thing, the magic that I thought it really captured was that nobody, nobody felt like an enhancement talent on there at all. And if, there was even a match where Kevin Cross lost in like a couple minutes to Bobby Roode, and I don't even think he got offense in, but he's still, the video packages and everything still made him feel like a really big deal. So, right. yeah, I, I thought that was a magic that when you were watching the matches, you seriously had no idea who was going to win. It's not like some promotions, like you're going to watch a match and you know probably who's booked to win. And, uh, I thought they did a really good with that job with that. That was the the best part of well, not the best part, but I think one of the unique parts of the original Global Force was anything you wanted to film on your iPhone and send them, um, they would use this content. So you could put yourself over as much as you wanted to. You didn't just have to wait till the tapings. Like most of those video packages were shot by the wrestlers themselves on their iPhones. Um, that's just what Kevin Sullivan preferred was iPhone, you know, landscape view. And uh, so it was like, and you could send them stuff and you're like, is this what you're looking for? And they're like, oh, could you try it like that? Like the feedback was great. The, uh, but it was always like, yeah, send us a thousand videos a day. And that's what Lester and I did. I mean, they got a ton of stock, you know, B-roll footage from those days where they probably just never used anything. But I mean, every workout we did, every car trip, like just talking shit to each other, you know, like 
they they used or they you know took it and gave feedback so i thought that was really cool i thought in those tapings you looked super jacked I'm, and i'm not trying to say you're you're smaller now but are, are you thinner now than you were back then or slimmer um you know so as far i don't know i think i was actually leaner at global force um i was pretty out of shape when i got signed to impact i was uh um getting ready for a powerlifting competition and uh, I have a hard time keeping weight on. So, I mean, not to jump around, but the story of impact is I was sitting at McDonald's, like uh, double fisting, double cheeseburgers, watching my kids play at the play pit when Jeff called and asked if I wanted to come work for impact in like three weeks. I was like, Oh yeah, great. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is going to be great. <laughs> but, uh, and then, uh, Al Snow had pulled me aside at, you know, one of the days of the tapings. He's like, hey, man, like, you're a big dude, but you might want to tighten this up, man. I was like, yeah, <laughs> I, know. I know, you know. And you just say yes and thank you and stuff. Like, I'm not one of those guys who tries to make excuses like, oh, I was already doing it, you know. Um, and then right now, I don't know, I'm, I was like 207 the other day, and I think I'm at like 10% body fat right now, so... My my weight's always gone up and down because I've done competitive bodybuilding here and there. Yeah, I don't I don't know. At the tapings, I was actually probably leaner. You just look better on TV when you're leaner. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of Jeff, I got to ask you: Have you had any Have you had any contact with him in the recent weeks, or do you know how he's doing at all? Nah, Jeff was always so cool to me, but like stuff like that, I'm kind of weird about. Like, I until he started starts like. I don't know, coming out on social media and stuff like that. I was just kind of leaving it alone. You know, I, like I hope the best for him. I hope he gets the help he needs, but I'm just not one of those guys who, you know, when someone's going through something like that, because, uh, I mean, Jeff's a business associate, um, kind of a mentor and stuff like that, done wonderful things for me. Um, you know, he's a, he's a friend, but it, I, it wasn't like a day-to-day -day how you do anything with Jeff ever. No, fair enough. I, I want to ask one more uh, GFW question here, and then I, I want to transition and impact stuff a little bit. But watching the current impact product, a lot of Jeff's vision is still being utilized to the point that it's probably no longer exclusive to him. Do you think he still, you know, like the GFW thing still has a, a future or possibility of becoming a reality at all? I mean, with anything, when something gets a little bit of a black eye and the public eye, you know, it would be tough. Uh, I... I think Jeff can do whatever he, you know, puts his mind to. Um, that's the Jeff Jarrett I know. Um, I know people have different experiences with Jeff and whatnot, but Jeff's always been good to us. He's always made good on his word. Um, so, yeah, I, I think if he wanted to do it, he could make it happen. All right, so with all that being said, I want to transition to Impact a little bit. I know people are really, really curious about everything that happened. And uh, as I said, I, I was at your debut and I think that was uh, one of the reasons I really, really took a liking to Reno Scum um, over that time. Uh, to keep it re pretty real, the company has taken quite a pounding by the wrestling media on a pretty regular basis. So what was your uh, time like there? And what were, what were your impressions? Um, Impact, you know, everybody was super cool. Um, we walked in, um, everybody was friendly. Uh, there's a lot of people there, so it's hard to learn everyone's names. Uh, but yeah, you, you know, like, Luster's the best at, like, every time he sees it on social media, like, every year, like, long before we were ever signed to Impact, uh, I was just like, yeah, everybody says they're going out of business every year, and every year they're wrong, you know? So, right. <laughs> it's just all, like, I mean, I, I see all the stuff that gets talked about them, but, like, uh, all my checks cleared, all my checks came on time when they were supposed to come. People were very friendly. People were very helpful. Uh, we learned a lot. So yeah, I have no bad experiences there. Um, you know, and I get to work Crazy Steve and Abyss who are just so kind and, you know, outside the ring and giving and whatnot and helpful. Uh, so, yeah, I don't, I don't really know. Um, like, it, you know, my impact career is literally six days, though, because of the injury. <laughs> right, I hear <laughs> So with that being said, I hate to touch on something so unfortunate, but I do want to ask you about the departure. Was it something that you uh, you saw coming at all by the time it happened, or was it something you actually requested? Um, I kind of saw the writing on the wall when 
I mean, it was just, hey, I'm ready for Slammiversary. Hey, we'll let you know. And then Bob Ryder would email, hey, you're not written into TV. And then the August tapings, it was like, uh, hey, uh, you know, what's going on? And then still nothing. Um, or that time it was, it, we're just trying to figure out how to bring Reno Scum back in a big way. And then I th the next tapings must have been right before Canada. So we got the call the week of. Uh, those tapings and um, I mean they released us but it was kind of uh, like I had talked to Luster and I was like I think if we're not used by the end of the year I'm just going to ask for my release because um, you know it sucks sitting around wondering not taking bookings that week um, I still work a regular job so I have to take vacation and then it's like oh you're not going so I'm just sitting at home wasting vacation time when like, I could have planned something for my family to do, uh, stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah I kind of saw the writing. And then, like, uh, when the Chris brothers came in, I was kind of just like, I, I feel like that's where we were supposed to go. Yeah. Like, not, not talking shit about them. Those guys are really great dudes. You know what I mean? It's awesome because that's show business, right? Like, the show goes on, and if someone gets hurt, someone's there to fill their place and stuff like that. Phenomenal dudes. I, I'm just bummed that, like, we're not wrestling the Chris brothers and LAX on TV weekly. Cause I think those are really good matchups. And when you like from a personal standpoint, and I'm not talking bad about the company, I'm just like, well, like it seems pretty easy to write us back into TV when like the tag division centered around only two tag teams, you know? Yeah, right. And uh, like, I, I don't think we have like a super, super crazy internet presence, but like, you know, I, I obviously like vanity search myself on Twitter, like every other wrestler. And I always search the hashtag Reno scum. And like every time impacts on, I'd see some mention us and stuff like that, especially during the tag matches. So it was just kind of one of those things where I was like, yeah, the writing's on the wall, but um, you know, when I talked to them, they're like, you know, the door's open. This isn't just like a get out of here and stuff like that. So we'll see in the future what happens. So you kind of, you actually kind of, beat me to my next question there um because i was i was gonna say i didn't want it to come off controversial but i i just wanted to know if you felt like that was kind of your spot i mean they they kind of came out of nowhere got the real quick push got the gold and i, I would yeah. think i would look out if i were you i think i would look at it and be like that could have been or should have been us yeah i you know like wrestling it's always easy to plug yourself into anyone's spot is a thing um i'm not saying the specifics were written for us or whatever and like i said like anybody can fill any spot you just you know you have to go out there and do it and uh, they're killing it like the matches that they had with lax are awesome you know i still watch the product and sure i think that was a spot that we would have had but i'm not bitter about it because like i said i'm gonna be 35 so I guess maybe when I was 24, I'd be super bitter and, you know, pissed off about it. But now it's, that's just the business, you know? Yeah. And I have to agree with you. I mean, uh, a, uh, Reno scum match with OVE or LAX would have been amazing. Cause I don't think, did you work them at all in the tapings? I think maybe you might made of it may have in a, uh, maybe a four way match or something. When LAX got the vacant belts, we were in that match with them. Um, but uh, that match was put together so fast because of segment times and stuff like that um, that we barely got to do anything with LAX, you know, and uh, just watching each other, like, um, like uh, uh, Santana or, or, I don't remember. I mean, they're both good dudes, and we just clicked backstage really well and watched each other's matches, and I was like, man, like, be able to do this or that or you know it, it was just one of those things that like everybody wanted to work and then it just wound up not happening and i don't know i still think someone on the indies is going to book it next year so oh yeah it's an absolute must i know christina von erie is really close to you and a lot of people were really excited to see what she could do with impact um is she disappointed on her recent run or how it turned out or was she do you know, was she only expecting to be there for a short term, perhaps to drop the belt? No, she got signed to the same contract we did for two years. Um, and then, yeah, I don't I don't know. She was actually, I got done helping on a surgery, and I checked my phone, and she's like, I just got released from Impact. And then um, 10 minutes later, Luster had uh, 
sent the same text, and I was like, I'll just call Bob Ryder. <laughs> so I kind of beat him to the punch, you know, but other than that. Oh, so when you got that message from her, that was right around the time you did. We all got released the same day. Wow, that's really interesting because she was taken off the website like months before that. Oh, wow. I didn't know. Yeah. I always thought there was a little bit of hope because we were always on the website and like the other stuff like that, like when they stopped asking me for the video packages that they were producing was enough. Right. Like, uh, probably, you know, going on. Yeah. You guys were on the site all the way up until the release. She was taken down after Slammiversary. Oh, I see. So that's interesting. A lot of us thought she was already done. So that that's that's crazy. Um, a lot of people were really excited to potentially see the three of you together on screen. So yeah, that uh, I don't know if there's any global force on YouTube where we're all three together. Um, but they put us together at the amp tapings, and then like I say, I, like it's not like creative emails me a sheet and stuff, but. I imagine once that they had signed her, that's where we were going with everything. I can't remember the girl's name that LAX had. Diamante. Diamante, yeah. Um, so I just assumed, like, you know, before I got hurt, everything was going to line up that way. Because uh, Christina and her are pretty good friends, uh, from my understanding, too. So I think it would have been a lot of fun. And I don't know. I think they can pull the trigger on it if, you know, something works out next year. Um we had a couple of things in the barrel. Uh, I wouldn't say offers, but we got some things we got to think about after the holidays and stuff like that. Luster and I, because um, you know, I we're a tag team, and um, not to get off subject, but like, you know, if anything good happens for me, he supports it, and vice versa. But we always try and do everything together. Uh, we're just big fans of tag wrestling. Um, it's just easier to travel together than sometimes with random people. <laughs> are you guys, um, I'm going to get back to Christina here in a second with one more question, but are you and Lester, you know, shoot best friends or very close? Cause yep. there's a lot of tag teams out there who actually are not. Yeah. That oh, cool he's, uh, yeah. He's my best friend. Uh, he's best man at my wedding. I was best man at his wedding. Um, Luster, um, uh, quick story about him is I met him when I was a senior in high school uh, I was watching, I was up late, and on public ask, access, there was some backyard wrestling. And uh, so I emailed these guys. I was like, I don't want to do that, you know, because I wanted to go to wrestling school anyway. And that's how I met Luster and had really good grades. Um, my senior year, I had just turned down a scholarship for gymnastics uh, to Berkeley. I was like, man, I'm just going to drop out of school, man. Let's just move to San Francisco and go to that all pro wrestling school. And Luster actually convinced me to not drop out of high school for no reason whatsoever because <laughs> I had like four <laughs> months left of high school and like, like I said, decent grades, you know, I'm not a straight A student or nothing like that. But he's like, dude, like it's four months. What's going to matter? And then a wrestling school actually wound up opening in Reno. So I owe him that. And uh, um, he was a punk rocker and I was a punk rocker. And yeah, I mean, we've been best friends now since shit, 2000. <laughs> It's funny you say the, uh, not funny, but interesting you say the uh, gymnastics, possible gymnastics scholarship, because you're very, uh, you're very athletic. It's not, and it's not something I think anyone would expect looking at you. Right. I, uh, Lester says it best. He always, like, compliments me better, but, like, there's a lot of things I can do that I don't do in the ring just because I don't think it compliments uh, the way Reno Scum wrestles. Through our early 20s and stuff like that, I mean, Reno Scum, that wasn't a gimmick, like, we were living a lifestyle. We we're always in and out of bar fights and stuff like that, and uh, uh, party a lot. Now Reno Scum's kind of TV friendly. We're family guys and stuff like that. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I do shooting stars and stuff like that, but I just and my knees hurt. I'm old, you know, and everybody else does them. I like double stomping people. And it's easier for me. So, but yeah, <laughs> it, uh, gymnastics played a big part, and you know, me being able to wrestle and whatnot so to transition back to uh, christina von erie here really quick what what's she been up to she's relatively quiet on social media so she's not really someone you can <laughs> the average fan can follow very closely i uh i haven't had much contact with her except for that day we got released i know she got married uh to another wrestler up in canada uh she's living up there now so i don't see her a whole lot um, I think she wrestles for it's ECCW. 
I don't know what that sounds. Eastern, I don't know. Whatever <laughs> it is up there in Canada, Extreme Canadian Championship Wrestling, something like that. Right. Really old company. Um, and, yeah, uh, I don't know if she's just happy being married up there or what. She probably sent her a text around Christmas and get in touch with her. But um, Christina, uh, I met her when she was, like, 15 getting into wrestling. And uh, Lester and I put her with us because she was a punk rocker. And uh, she went to do very well for herself for a while there. Uh, you, you're doing a bar wrestling show coming up, right? Because I sent you that graphic last night on Twitter because uh, yeah. the artist just posted it on Facebook. And I said, hey, I said, is that Reno Scum? He's like, yeah. And I was like, has he has he seen it yet? He's like, I'm not sure. I was like, I'll send it to him. Yeah, um, it's called Bar Wrestling. Uh, I'm not sure if Joey Ryan owns it, but uh, Joey books through it and stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. They always run on a Thursday night. Uh, it's always packed, and uh, Joey always kind of rotates the talent. So he's been trying to get us for a long time, and it's a Christmas-themed one. And um, can't go into a lot of details about it, but it should be a really good show on Thursday. And I think those are immediately available. I want to say on like high spots or something like that to watch. Oh no, kidding! I didn't know that. I believe they have a deal with High Spot. I, I'll I'll DM you. Um, okay, cool. I'll figure it out. But yeah, you're able to watch those shows. Like I think he's ran three or four already. Yeah, I watch another uh, promotion, uh, Tried and True in Tennessee. I watch them on high spots, and I and I always see the bar the cards and they look really good they're in uh southern california right yep they run okay. in la um Buster and i spent a lot of time in la just because pays well most people fly us um and then there's just so much wrestling in southern california uh, i think we've been down there the past four or five weekends um we're at san diego at a bar sh- we wrestle like the Let's see, San Diego was a bar show, and then L.A. last weekend was at a brewery, which was super cool. Uh, we got to do a little spot with Blue Meanie. He was there, which was cool. Uh, it was even cooler because Blue Meanie was like, yeah, man, I've been a fan of you guys for a long time. I was like, sweet, me too. <laughs> <laughs> it's always funny when someone like you watch growing up like watches you, you know? Right. Yeah, that's insane. Uh, that's actually home for me. I mean, Illinois is home, but I'm uh, – from Southern California, my mom lives there. So, okay. and then my dad, my dad lives in Las Vegas. So I'm determined between the two. Um, I'm gonna see you guys live again. <laughs> I'm gonna make it happen. My brother still lives in Southern California, and I've been um, trying to get him to go to the bar shows. And Thursday's the only night of the week he's uh, not available. Yeah. So I've been. Uh, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to push him even harder now to find a way to get there. Cause your show's in uh, January. My which show? The one that the one I sent you that Christmas graphic for? Oh no, it's probably that's this tomorrow. Month, or, oh, it's uh, tomorrow. I'm sorry, Thursday. Thursday this yeah. week. Okay. I don't know why I asked if it was January when it's obviously a holiday show. But uh, all right. So we're gonna get into some social media questions here in sure. a bit. Last thing I want to ask you though, what's uh, I don't know how much of it you can say, uh, but what's next for you? I, I don't want to make it sound dramatic, but you know, how do you kind of deal with? Uh, you know, initially realizing a dream to be on television and then to have that kind of disappear in a blink of an eye. I, you know, I, yeah, I can't really say what's next. We, we got a couple of emails that are promising maybe. And then, um, I'm going to call impact in January again and see if they have anything for us. That's for sure. Uh, cause that's when Bob Ryder told us to call, uh, other than that, uh, Nothing, you know, I mean, nothing and everything. Take any booking that's offered to us that gives us our rate and whatnot. And uh, just keep on killing it. Um, I know All Pro Wrestling's coming back big again after their Cow Palace shows. And, I, you know, I don't know. I, we're, we're so West Coast based. And, like, sometimes I'm like, man, I really want to get out. But, like, I don't, I don't know, man. Like, California and Nevada. Um, Utah, Oregon, I don't know. We stay all right on the West Coast. But, yeah, we definitely need to branch out. And, I don't know. We need to get overseas this year. I tried to get Michael Elgin to book you guys at uh, Glory Pro here recently. Uh, I mean, it's not recent. It's uh, locally. But he said the uh, he said flying people out from the West Coast is <laughs> basically something he tries to tries to avoid. But he said he does like you guys very much. So. Yeah, we had a we had a good match with him and uh, Brian Cage at the Cow Palace uh, 
you know, back in November or something like that. When you talk to Bob Ryder, I'm telling you, he needs to know that uh, Reno Scum and, and Christina Von Erie, LAX and Diamante and OVE and uh, Nevea Christ, that's money right there. Yeah, man. <laughs> no one's doing nothing like that. That's uh, So I want to get into some social media questions here before we wrap it up. Right. Uh, shout out to Regulator J. You're the one that asked where did Oi come from. Uh, already asked that, but I'll give you a shout out anyway. Uh, TW Undisputed on Twitter. And you kind of touch on this. If the door was open to return to impact, is there anything you would do next time around that you didn't do the first time? Oh, uh, not get injured. <laughs> <You know>? uh, <laughs> but uh, no, uh, I, I don't know. I, I feel like we had just gotten comfortable um, like, like day two or three, like being out there and um, stuff like that. So, I don't think different. I just think it would be a lot more, you know, once you get your feet wet on TV and uh, you figure out where you're going with stuff. So, no, I, I wouldn't do anything different. I mean, we're Reno Scum. I, I was very pleased that Impact let us keep our name, um, both our tag team name and our wrestling names. And they didn't try and change us. I probably wouldn't say Oi as much. They really wanted us to, to pump that down people's throat. And Oi is a little more organic the way it happens. Um, right. But other than that, yeah, it just, I just, I think on a TV show, sometimes you have to do that. And, you know, I, I listen to the guys who have been there longer than me, and uh, that's what they thought we should do. So we, we did it, you know. I want to ask, uh, didn't you switch your, uh, your, your finisher up on TV? Because I felt like one day you did it off the top rope, the double stomp, and then another day you may have, may have leapfrogged him. Yeah, we switched to the leapfrog. We've done both for a long time. We usually go off the top rope just because uh, I like the top rope one better. Because um, mm -hmm. at the end of a match, if I'm blown up, uh, I don't have to jump over Lester's big ass. Uh, <laughs> I mean, honestly, you know, I think the leapfrog one looks cooler. Uh, the leapfrog one's uh, a little more dangerous, too, just because you're coming straight down on someone. But we did get asked to switch it because uh, when Davey was still there, he was doing the top rope double stomp. Uh, I forget who asked us to do it. And then I talked to Davey about it and he's like, oh, I, I don't even really care, man. But he's like, I, I, I do what they say, you know, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, cause I just want to make sure like Davey wasn't mad. Cause I've known Davey for a long time too. I was like, man, I didn't even think about that. Cause we're double stomping people's heads and everyone else double stomps the chest. So, right. But yeah. He didn't care. So I thought it was funny. Cause I was like, well, it's the same move. <laughs> You know. There was a there was a point you did that, um, Davey did it, and then Loki had come in the next set of tapings, but he did it, and there was one other person that... Uh, Del Rio was doing it at the Triple yeah. Whoa. <laughs> and then, yeah, right, right. Uh, I think every other X Division guy uses it from time to time. You know, oh, Eddie Edwards uses it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was going to say, and someone did it on this past episode, I'm almost positive. They missed. It yeah. just kind of uh, went, went, turned into a front roll, but yeah... Um, let's see what else we got here for you. Uh, at, I don't know what the hell it says. Only 27 underscore IW who has had the biggest impact on your wrestling journey. Oh man. On my journey. Well, I mean, I guess not to get into that stuff, but like Randy Savage, like that's why I wanted to be a wrestler. Um, I was trained by, uh, Mustafa Saeed, who's one half of the gangsters from ECW, him and new Jack, uh, you know, he always taught me, you know, your worth and stuff like that. Um, I, I still call him weekly for advice or, uh, you know, just to see what's up and if I'm doing things right. Um, biggest influence, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I grew up loving Shawn Michaels, like every other guy my size. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, and, uh, I, yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean... I do it for my family now, you know, that, that's always nice. Like, uh, we, we just sold a house, but, um, and bought a new one, which is, you know, even better. Uh, it's the one my wife really wants, but the old house, like, uh, like, you know, my wife and kids and, um, like wrestling paid to landscape the entire backyard and stuff like that. So 
I don't know if it's influence, but like, I, you know, I do it for my family because every wrestler, they're away from somebody they love for, you know, either weeks at a time or weekends. And um, at least you have something to show for it. So I don't know. Those kind of people, Mustafa, Savage, Sean, my family. God, you, you mentioned Savage. I always tell people it's absolute honor if you were someone who was alive. Um, you're only a couple years younger than me. Uh, alive during you know his heyday like when he was like really not when he you know was getting older and right. uh, wcw and tna and all that but like those early wwf days uh you know wrestlemania 3 with steamboat and all that man yep um absolute honor to see all that stuff yeah savage uh, i you know i just like i liked wrestling but i loved randy savage as a kid like i could not turn the tv off when he was on like i rented every vhs tape that you know i I watched WrestleMania four a thousand times, and I I watched WrestleMania five hoping the ending would change every time. I, <laughs> I did the same thing. <laughs> you know, I I just I as, as a kid I just didn't relate to Hulk Hogan. I don't know what it was. So. Not at all. No. Uh, you know, as an adult and as a wrestler, you know, I, I'm like, yeah, Hulk's awesome too, but still, it's right. the greatest of all time in my book. It's funny. I thought that was just me. I, I used to watch that, uh, <laughs> and always thinking, um, maybe that last elbow, uh, he doesn't kick out this time. So, <laughs> yeah, too funny. Uh, Graham Williams, he he got two questions here for you. Uh, before the injury, were you aware of any possible plans for the future of Reno Scum? Uh, no. I mean, just we were coming back to. Uh, I think we were coming back to wrestle um, Mario and. Follow ball and then transition to LAX uh, because we were undefeated. Uh, right. The whole thing was we had never been pinned and stuff like that either in the four way match. So I think that's where we're going with that. But nothing in concrete that they were like, hey, this is what's happening next time. Right. Um, anyone at Impact that you met who was different than you expected them to be? No, every, you know, everybody's pretty cool. Um, you know, Del Rio was really, really cool. We had that, uh, we had the three-way, which was our last match on Impact with uh, Decay and then Garza and Laredo Kid. And uh, Del Rio made it a point, like, he loved that match, I guess. Like, he watched the monitor backstage, and when we got backstage, like, he praised us for, like, five minutes in the locker room. And uh, not that he was ever not cool backstage. It just, I was like, man, you're extra cool right now, you know? Like, it's just, I mean, I don't know. That guy's... You know, been to WrestleMania, done everything, Triple Mania. And so, like, just for him to take time out to watch the monitor and then, you know, praise the match and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, it was super cool. Um, no, I mean, I think for the most part, wrestlers, once you get to that level, um, and I'm sure there's day-to-day, -day, like, people get bothered or annoyed or have a bad day, but I think people are either quiet or cool or, you know, then there's the guys who just – talk shit when no one's around because that's the way some people are <laughs> right not, not that that happened to us i'm just saying like in general that's i don't know that's life anyway that's any job you know when you were when you guys were uh backstage at impact because the um the dirt chiefs wanted to put it out that oh well the the guys from the global force tapings when they showed up at impact there was all this you know uh heat between the two sides and you you don't feel like that was the case at all no, I knew a lot of those guys. Like, I had either met them or whatever. Uh, friends with someone who's friends with them. Um, so, no, I, you know, I, can't, I don't remember who it was that pulled this aside, like, day two or three. And he's like, I, I'm not going to say who it is, but, like, there's, like, two or three of the boys that are mad that, like, you didn't shake their hand today or something like that. And I was like, man, whatever. Like, I don't know. Like, I understand shaking people's hand, and, but, like, there's so many people, and, like, you know what I mean? So I was just like, yeah, well, I'll just shake everyone's hand tomorrow. And <laughs> yeah. So, I, like, I don't know, like, you're taping six days in a row. I, I'm cool if people don't shake my hand except for the first and the last day. Like, William Regal told me that. So as far as I'm concerned, that's, like, the measuring stick for how you can say hi and goodbye. You know, like. Yeah, fair enough. If yep. Regal doesn't care, then I don't think anyone else needs to care, but. If I offended someone, like, I'm sorry, but the thing is, when people offend me, I go tell them. I don't tell someone else who tells someone else who eventually gets back to me. So, I don't know. If someone was mad at me, like, sorry that I didn't shake your hand, I guess. Fair enough. 
<laughs> but there was no like there was no global force versus impact when like we showed up okay cool so why what just why clear that up a little yeah um impact heads on twitter says if you were it's kind of putting you on a spy here if you were stranded on a desert island and only had a five punk rock albums what would they be Ooh, five albums oh, jesus um life won't wait by rancid's probably like uh probably my all-time fave um that's or no i'm sorry out come the wolves uh it's my favorite rancid album that's actually uh the trunks i wear when i wrestle i got lars frederickson on my crotch because he's okay <laughs> he's a good buddy of mine so <laughs> haven't been staring at that area <laughs> yeah he always jokes about that he's like every time i watch you wrestle it's weird but uh, <laughs> um i don't know uh one of the old gg allen um things because that's kind of where scum like the name came from we we're listening to a lot of gg allen punk rock at that time he's got that bite at you scum song we're like i'll yeah, just be reno scum oh uh, jesus uh probably best of the ramones um i can't remember the name of the album there's a best of social distortion and she's um oh misfits collection too all right, good. Good. I didn't know if you're gonna be able to put five together there, but uh, that's tough. Made it happen. If you ask me in an hour, like those will change, except for how come the wolves, Brian? But whatever. <laughs> I always have, I, you know, someone was interviewing me on a podcast about three months ago, and they asked me my top five wrestlers of all time, and um, I actually struggled yeah. on that. And then uh, when I got off the podcast, I was like, oh my god, I, Chris Jericho, I should have put him on there. So I think when I was a kid, it was easier. Like as an adult, like it. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. It just changes like. Week to week, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, got three more here. Uh, Lance Moonrider on Twitter. This is real simple. Four Horsemen or NWO? Uh, NWO. For me. I'll agree with you there. Uh, Lynch Daniel, 67. This is interesting. Uh, what were the difference between differences between the Amped and the Impact tapings? Not a whole lot, honestly. Um, it was structured the same way because Jeff was running both at the time, and I think that's probably just the way he runs his shows. Um, yeah, it was just uh, someone come get you, and they're like, we need you to film this content, or here's your agent for this match. So wasn't – oh, um, not that the money was bad at Amps, but the money was better at Impact, so that's the difference, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Uh, a couple of, a guy here on YouTube. Um, shout out to Tony Damage. I said I'd shout him out because he's a big Reno Scum fan, and I shout him up by name. But um, he wants to know what was it like wrestling in the Cow Palace with APW, and what's it been like seeing that company grow after originating from a garage in Hayward? So I've been with APW since I think I debuted with them in 2003. I've been fired more times than I care to count by different bookers and whatever, but. Uh, um it, it was awesome you know like i i won the universal heavyweight title the first time in the garage and uh or both times in the garage and to see it go from you know 75 like rabid fans to i don't know the last cow Palace show i think was close to four thousand people it was awesome um it, you know it's fitting that marcus mack did that for enrolling alexander's memory just kept apw going and evolved it into what it is today um but yeah i, I don't know I, wrestling the cow palace was awesome because the first time i was supposed to actually wrestle luster for the title and then i popped my bicep uh so i had to watch the show and do commentary and then <laughs> <laughs> i had to do commentary on luster's match and his match was awesome so that really sucks so getting to actually walk down the aisle with luster and wrestle um cage and elgin was you know awesome so last one here uh, from Mass the Mash. Do you feel like your run in Impact would have been better if you were booked as heels? Uh, I I don't think it would have mattered because I think a lot of times people look at us and they think we're heels and then, you know, by somewhere between like the fourth and tenth time you see us, you just like us, I guess. I don't know. We're, cause, I don't know. We're kind of for kids and for adults. I think for the most part people think we're cool, so... <laughs> I, I I don't know. I mean, I like being a heel. 
we don't get to do it a lot that much anymore. Uh, just based on where we wrestle, people like us, which is great for our merchandise sales. Uh, are there you got any uh, new pro wrestling T-shirts coming out anytime soon? Any des- new designs? There will be. Um, I got to get them uploaded. Uh, we just put out a couple uh, new designs that we're selling at shows. So yeah, there will be some new pro wrestling tees probably after the first of the year. Sounds good. I don't. I think it's a tie between you and EC3. How many uh, shirts I have? Oh, nice. Uh, for, <laughs> for, for, <laughs> I've actually been trying to think of a design. I'm, I'm a graphic design my, designer myself. I just haven't really been practicing in the last couple of years, and I keep thinking, what, what the hell can I come up with Reno, for Reno Scum? But uh, drawing a blank. But if something ever uh, pops in my head, I'll, I'll shoot you a design for sure. Yeah. All right. With all that being said, I want to thank you for coming on and. Uh, as you know, I'm a big fan of you and uh, Reno Scum, so can't wait to see what's next for you guys. And sounds like you got some things in the works, but uh, can't can't wait to see. So thank you very much uh, for taking the time out and coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Much love to Adam Thornstow, one half of Reno Scum. Thank you for listening as we talked Global Force, Impact, CVE, Injury, all that good stuff. If you made it this far, congratulations. Please hit the subscribe button. More great interviews to come. Thanks for checking us out. Peace.